Alright guys, I'm back with my review of this week's episode of WWE Monday Night Raw for November 5th, 2012. And I was actually enjoying the show, for the most part anyways. Um, right up until that Divas match, Kofi Del Rio, and the show just really started to drag from that point on. Uh, so it really ended up being just a really average show overall. And I have no idea what they're thinking, because we all know the ratings have been crap lately. And in order to improve the ratings, they put on Heath Slater versus Jey Uso. Cobro versus Primo and Epico. This is their idea to boost ratings. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's like they're not even trying to improve the ratings. They really don't care. Um, so I really... And to top it off, this whole show really felt like they just threw it all together at the last minute. Like completely changing the Survivor Series main event. Which I actually think is an improvement. The show actually sounds much better now than it did last week. But the way they did it, it was like they weren't even trying to make it fit. They just had Vince come out and change the match. They didn't try and make it into an angle, nothing. They just changed Survivor Series. I guess they realized the show sounded like crap and they needed to do something. So they changed it tonight. That was it. Uh, so yeah, just things like that. The show just really felt thrown together at the last minute, and it showed. So anyways, on to the show. It was in England with a really hot crowd for pretty much everything, except for a few things you just you could not get into. I don't care how hot a crowd is, they cannot get into that Del Rio versus Kofi match. Just no one cared, and you can't blame them for that. So we got Jim Ross and Cole on commentary. Um, earlier today, we see The Miz talking to Paul Heyman. He asks what kind of leader runs away, and Heyman says Punk was just leaving to regroup. So Miz ends up quitting the team, and that was it. Miz is out of Team Punk. First match is Primetime Players with Antonio Cesaro versus R-Truth, Sin Cara, and Rey Mysterio. Um, the first thing I thought of when I saw Truth out there was the last thing I really remember him doing in England, pretty sure it was an England show, was smoking cigarettes <laughs> when he turned on uh, John Morrison and was just smoking cigarettes out there and blowing it in his face. That's the one thing I'll never forget Truth doing. Um, this was actually a pretty fun match, I thought. They're building up some type of possible R-Truth versus Cesaro angle with these touts, I guess. Um, and there was one point in this match where Sin Cara just looked lost. I mean, he, he botched the arm drag, and then there was some miscommunication with him and Ray. I don't know what was going on with him. I mean, typical Sin Cara stuff here, but overall it was a fun match. Sin Cara goes for the La Mystica on Cesaro, turns it into a head scissors. Ray hits a 619, and Truth hits the Little Jimmy for the win. Vicky comes out. She plays her evidence again. So Cena comes out and says, Vicky running a clean show is like him learning a new move. It's not going to happen. <laughs> this was awesome, I have to say. Cena did a great job out there with this. Uh, he's talking to the crowd. He says, is it four moves, five moves? Do the tackles count? They count. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed that because we all talk about Cena just doing the same moves over and over again. So it's always funny when he acknowledges that. Still doesn't try and change it, but he acknowledges it. Uh, Vicky plays security footage of AJ in her bathrobe going into a hotel room. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. We see Cena put a do not disturb sign <laughs> on his door. Um, so Vicky says that must have been one heck of a business meeting. Cena says that was two different cameras and two different rooms. <laughs> it's just so hilariously bad. So Vicky calls out AJ. And AJ doesn't come out. Instead, she plays a little video on the Titan Tron. She says she can't come out there because she would beat the hell out of Vicky and get fired. And she wouldn't be able to do what she loves to do. Dolph appears in the video and says, we all know what you love to do. Heyman is trying to recruit Barrett to join Team Punk. Good pop for Barrett here. He refuses because he doesn't trust Heyman. But then he says... Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> um, but only if Heyman puts in writing that he owes Barrett. Daniel Bryan with Kane versus Cody Rhodes with Sandow. Um, Sandow attacks Kane on the outside. Bryan dives on him. C 
Cody Rhodes hits the disaster kick off the apron onto Daniel Bryan, throws him in, hits Crossroads, gets the win. Very short. Afterwards, he cuts a promo saying that Damian Sandow could beat Kane just as easily as he beat Bryan. Kane pulls Sandow into the ring. Uh, they start that match. Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes start to brawl around. The ref sends them both to the back, and Kane beats Sandow with a choke slam. Uh, I thought it was decent, but it's nothing new, and they had to have both teams look strong here, so nothing really got accomplished either. So it was kind of just a throwaway couple of matches. Brad Maddox comes out. He gives his side of the story. Says he worked alone. Punk and Paul Heyman had nothing to do with him. Uh, Low-blowing Ryback. He says that his dream was to be a WWE superstar, and he couldn't get a job in WWE because he's six foot and 207 pounds. Well, isn't that CM Punk? I don't know. But he said he couldn't get a job because he's not a freak. He can't do flips and all that crap. So he decided he had to become a referee. That way he could make it to the WWE, and he just needed that one chance to make an impact. And so he low-blowed Ryback, and now everyone's going to remember him forever. He says he wants a contract and a match with Ryback. So Vince McMahon comes out and says Maddox is lying, or he thinks he's lying, and CM Punk and Heyman are still involved somehow. But he's going to give Maddox a million dollar contract if he can beat Ryback next week. So Vince decides to bring out Vicky Guerrero, and he just has her change the Survivor Series main event to Cena versus Ryback versus Punk and a triple threat for the title. That was it. There was no explanation needed. Um, it was kind of funny how Vicky said Dolph Ziggler she wanted to put in the matches. And then Vince says, if you say Dolph Ziggler, I'll fire you right here. <laughs> that was funny, but also kind of sad for Dolph Ziggler. But yeah, it was... I, I mean, they, they didn't even try to come up with anything. They just said, well, send Vince out there and he'll change the match. Sheamus versus Miz with Big Show on commentary. I actually thought Big Show was pretty funny here, threatening to hit Michael Cole and everything. Um, I did enjoy that. And this actually ended up being a pretty good match. Uh, Sheamus wins the bro kick. Vicky comes out of Vince McMahon's office and tells Dolph that he's going to be leading Team Ziggler now. It's no longer Team Punk, it's Team Ziggler. Dolph's the leader. Punk comes up and he's pissed off, says Vince is screwing him. And Vicky says tonight it's going to be Punk and Dolph versus Cena and Ryback. And Punk just keeps saying, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? We see a promo for this guy, Fandango. Mind if I cut in? <laughs> I don't know anything about this. I know, um, I guess it could be a spoiler, maybe, but it's Johnny Curtis. Uh, that's Fandango. So this guy's going to debut. He's supposed to have a tango dancer gimmick. I don't know. I'm interested to see what they're going to do with it. Hopefully it's nothing like this Brodus Clay crap that's been going on for far too long. But I thought the promo was pretty goofy. The guy's going to be a heel. Sheamus and Regal go for a pint. Eve and Oksana versus Layla and Caitlyn. And this is where I just I kind of shut down. <laughs> um, for most of this... After, during this match and then the rest of the show, I just kind of shut down for everything else. It just dragged on and on. But this, the match itself, I guess it wasn't really that bad. Um, I mean, Layla hits Oksana with a kick to the head. Eve hits the neck breaker on Layla. And Kaylin hits the Scorpion Death Drop on Eve for the win. It's just one of those things nobody cares about. I mean... Oksana's there because of the whole wig attacking Caitlyn. I don't even know if they're still talking about that anymore. I don't know. Backstage, Del Rio's upset about Ziggler. How he's going to be the leader of the team. He thinks he should be the leader. Rosa Mendez bumps into him. He says, no problem. I don't know what they're trying to do with that. So we get Del Rio versus Kofi. Orton's music plays. Kofi rolls up a distracted Del Rio. Afterwards, Del Rio gets hit with an RKO. It's just nothing much to it. Santino and Zack Ryder versus Primo and Epico. Ryder hits the Rough Rider on Primo. Santino hits the Cobra on Epico for the win. Brodus Clay versus Wade Barrett. 
Barrett actually hits the winds of change on Brodus, which I thought was pretty impressive. And he wins with the elbow. I thought this was fine, except Brodus got a little too much offense, I think, because he's really just been jobbing to everybody lately. And Barrett's really needs to be built up here. And I don't see why Brodus needed to get so much offense. I think Cesaro beat Brodus quicker than Barrett did here. Heath Slater with Jinder Mahal versus Jey Uso. This was the 2MB tonight. I have no idea where McIntyre was, but he wasn't there. And Heath Slater is wearing eyeliner, which looks absolutely ridiculous, which makes it great because his entire gimmick is being ridiculous. Slater hits the spike DDT for the win, so Heath Slater has another finisher. <laughs> That's like four now, I think. Punk and Heyman come out. Punk says once again, he had nothing to do with Maddox getting involved with the match at Hell in a Cell. And Vince is continuing his tradition of screwing the most talented performer. Funny thing about this is I noticed a CP Monk sign in the crowd, which is pretty awesome. Punk and Ziggler versus Cena and Ryback. Ryback gets the hot tag. He destroys Punk and Ziggler. He hits Shell Shocked on Punk. Wins the match. I really thought when he had Punk up and Shell Shocked that Brad Maddox was going to run out there and do something, anything. But no, nothing happened. Ryback just beat Punk. Um, and afterwards, Cena and Ryback have a stare down, and Ryback just keeps saying, Feed me more. So. That was it. That was the end of Raw. Uh, just kind of a lackluster show here. I mean, it just... This one really felt like three hours. I can't say that. But, yeah, next week, apparently, they still have to pick a baby face for Team Foley. And we get Brad Maddox versus Ryback. And I want to mention that I thought Brad Maddox actually did a pretty good job here tonight. This was his first big promo out there. And it was a little awkward, but I thought he did a pretty good job. And... I'm actually curious to see what he can do. So, yeah, next week, God, they really got to start doing something with Survivor Series. It's definitely an improvement than what it was last week, but still, it really needs a lot of work. And hopefully they have a good name for this Team Foley babyface. I'm trying to think who that could be to replace Ryback's spot. I don't know, but um, anyways, that's it. That was Raw this week. Hope you guys liked this video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Bye. All right, guys, I'm back with my review of this week's episode of WWE Monday Night Raw for November 5th, 2012, and I was actually enjoying the show, for the most part, anyways. Um, right up until that Divas match, show actually sounds much better now than it did last week, but the way they did it, it was like they weren't even trying to make it fit. They just had Vince come out and change the match. They didn't try and make it into an angle, nothing. They just changed the And in order to improve the ratings, they put on Heath Slater versus Jey Uso. Cobro versus Primo and Epico. This is their idea to boost ratings. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's like they're not even trying to improve the ratings. They really don't care. Um, so I really... And to top it off, this whole show really felt like they just threw it all together at the last minute. Like completely changing the Survivor Series main event. Which I actually think is an improvement. The show, Kofi Del Rio. And the show just really started to drag from that point on. Uh, so it really ended up being just a really average show overall. And I have no idea what they're thinking. Because we all know the ratings have been crap lately. 